Welcome back, casters, to the channel. I'm Mark, and today I'm going to help you all become better gamers. Now, today, guys, we've got a deck list from one of the best players in the San Antonio area, John, heavyweight champion of the world, one of the Smoky Squad pro players, and uh, he just topped one of the most recent San Antonio medal events, guys. That's right, there is an event hosted on the 7th of January, and he ended up placing top three. He actually got third place in the whole event out of, I think it was 36 people. There was a lot of freaking people who went to this event, guys, and um, he did really good. I'm proud of him, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go over his deck, guys. Um, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the deck. Uh, we're going to talk about the local meta, and if you're going to an event, what you might see. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and hit the, the card by card, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the choices. So he's running a 42-card spell book. Starting with the card by card, we got eight Cosmic Aura, two Prism Aura, two El Verde Entity, five Lizards, one Reptoid Riller, two Dark Watchers, two Fresno Nightcrawlers, one Flatwoods Monster, four Atmospheric Jellyfish, one Supernatural Black Hole, two Bookmarks, one Power Up Red, one Second Anniversary Celebrations, one New Beginnings, one First Anniversary Celebrations, one Dampen, one Dimension in a Bottle, one Lightning in a Bottle, two Black Hole Shard, one Chaos Crystal, two Twin Meteor for the Archive Guys for the side deck. We've got two Unholy Fire, two Bubbling Brew, one Balancing Beam, one New Year's in the Beginnings, one Ailed Saybrooks Blockheads, two Abduction, two Laser Beam Gun Upgrade, two Lighting in a Bottle, one Bet Sphere, and one Black Knight Satellite. Now, we're going to go over the main deck first, guys, and uh, let me say, guys, I think this is the most optimized, tweaked version that I've seen. I really like it, and I do really appreciate it. I do like the Dark Watchers. I know a lot of people have been cutting it out of the deck, but it does give the deck a little bit more consistency that I do appreciate. It gives you a little bit more of a, a slow roll, if you will. It lets you actually try and grind out Aura for the late game, and I think that's pretty cool. The Lizard People and Jellyfish ratio I think is perfect. If you run like the full 6 Lizards and 5 Jellyfish, you run into a lot more Bricks. I feel like five and four is perfect. And then of course playing the flat woods, the El Verde loop. I feel like that's always just really solid. Uh, and then of course the two Fresnos and the Reptoid Ruler. Perfect lineup. Uh, for the spells, guys, he is main decking supernatural black hole. I feel like this is just a really good main deck. I I I don't figure why you wouldn't play it. I, I'm seeing a lot of people who don't main deck it. Some of them side deck it, but I just feel like if you have a board wipe. You should probably use it. You never know how long a game's going to go. And I know, you know, when you're playing Cosmic, you're trying to go as aggressive, as aggro as possible. But sometimes you get behind in the game. Sometimes you don't win immediately in five turns. Like, is that crazy to say? I think that perfect me, Nick. Um, one first anniversary, second anniversary, main deck dampen. I love main deck dampen. There are so many good dark, there's so many good, like, just non-neutral spells in the game currently. That just needs to be stopped. Uh, specifically, of course, All Hallows Eve. Um, there's been a big resurgence of Cosmic recently. Uh, you know, the Grey's deck, that's been popping up a little bit. Uh, dark? I personally would have been a little bit scared of Dark because of the Salem Witches and the Chibi Salem Witches and stuff like that. And All Hallows Eve. Uh, All Hallows Eve, I think, is a good target that you'd want to stop. Other Dampens is a pretty good target. Call of the Storm. If you can stop Call of the Storm, really great. Uh, but there's just a lot of cards that Dampen can start, stop. Uh, Lightning in a Bottle, I think, is good for a little bit of an aggro push. Uh, your opponent's not going to really expect it, so I think this is a pretty good card. Uh, two Black Hole Shard, one Chaos Crystal, and two Twin Meteor. I'm so glad he's playing Twin Meteor. Oh my god. Twin Meteor, you can fatigue it for a Cosmic and a Flame. Flame, I think, is the best, you know, secondary aura that you could be playing in the deck. Uh, playing the Flame, having the extra Flame, gives you access to side decking on Holy Fire. Which, personally, I think is a really, really good card, especially against the Cosmic Mirror match, because on Holy Fire does 50 damage. Guess how much health Flatwoods Monster has? has 50 health. I think this is perfect with two prisms and the two essences. You can get Unholy Fire, and it's pretty consistent. Um, we're going to talk about the side deck now. Now, before we go full into the side deck, guys, I want to talk about the meta um, of the tournament. I actually have a pie chart that I'm not sure I'm going to edit in, but I'm going to talk about it. 
So for the whole tournament, guys, we actually got some percentages. There was 36 people who actually went to the event and were playing the day of. And as soon as it lets me zoom in, it's not letting me zoom in. Oh, baby. That's crazy. Okay, so for the event, guys, 24% of the tournament was playing Flame. Just like I thought, I honestly underest I overestimated Flame. I thought there'd be a lot more Flame in the deck in the in the tournament, but there really wasn't. Only 24%, which is crazy to say, but uh, there was 21% Cosmic, 15% Lightning, 15% Dual Aura decks. So decks that were going past two Auras. Uh, I would say most of these were the Worm decks. You know, the, the Cement Worm, the Ice Worm, those silly kind of decks. Um, there's also, I would say, 6% of people playing Dark. About 9% playing forest, 6% playing water, and like one person playing light, just pure light. And um, overall, I think this side deck is really well equipped for the metagame. I think this is really solid. And uh, personally, there's not a lot that I would have changed. Uh, Unholy Fire, of course, for the cosmic matchup. Bubbling Brew for the Gumbaroos. You already know, baby, you gotta kill it, gotta destroy the Gumbaroos. Balancing Beam, uh, now personally, I don't think everybody should be side decking Balancing Beam, but uh, John is a little bit older than the median age of a MetaZoo player, so I would say the average age of a MetaZoo player is around 22 to 24 years old, so if you're older or if you're younger than that, I would recommend playing Balancing Beam. Uh, there, if, if you can do a maximum of 100 damage with a neutral spell, I think that's really good. If you if you think it's a good call, I think it's a good call. I think side decking balancing beam is really good. So, uh, personally, I I can't I can't play this card because I'm 24 and like this would almost never come up. Like maybe one match out of a whole six or seven round tournament. So, um, New Year's New Beginnings. I feel like this is maybe a replace card. I would probably swap this out with something else. He is main decking New Beginnings, so. I guess depending on what he's playing against, he could swap it out. I guess if he's playing against Water, he'd want to put in New Year's New Beginnings. If he's playing against Cosmic, in case the opponent does search like the Overde, or if they search the uh, the Flatwoods Monster, you'd probably want to send that baby to the cemetery. Get him out of here, and then you don't have to worry about the loop. So, I, you know, uh, it's always a double-edged sword playing New Year's, but, you know, it's it's still good. <laughs> Uh, two more lightning in a bottle to get a little bit more aggro. Two laser beam. Gonna upgrade this card. Oh my god, I love this card. Oh, I love this card. This card is so goaded, and a lot of people don't play it. I think it's so good. It hits burrow beasties. So this card makes it so that you have a decent way to out the war matchup. You don't have to play earthquake. You can play laser beam gun upgrade. And this card does a lot of work. I saw it do a lot of work uh, on the day of the tournament. Really good card. Um, Abduction. This card is specifically more so for the uh, lightning matchup. This just puts a Kets under a lightning storm Terra, basically. And your opponent would have to destroy the Terra in order to get their Kets back. But they're not going to destroy their own Terra. So I think it's a good card. I think it's definitely something um other than that we got old save old say brooks blockheads uh this card is growing on me i do like it a lot has a contract effect you may place a piece of cloth on a bc in the arena if you do that bc does not awaken at the start of the next turn so you know in case your opponent's playing a cat stack or they're playing something really aggro you have a way to stop their bcs from awakening it can also stop a roperite from awakening so essentially it'll stop a convert beastie so i think that's pretty good there's there's a lot of cards that this card can stop um also it has an arena effect uh the little second line that says contract that's supposed to be eroded uh arena spells cost opposing casters an additional neutral or it's a contract when it is your turn this card i love this card okay so this stops this hurts dampen this hurts second anniversary this hurts Manaya. This hurts, uh, what else is it? There's another card I'm thinking of. But there's a few responses, a few cards that your opponent could play on your turn. And this card is really good against that. 
Um, I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting, but Manaya is Manaya is a really big one. Uh, or not Manaya. <laughs> Manaya is a beast teamwork. Um, but Dampin, second anniversary. Uh, those are the main two things you'd want to try and stop. And I just think this card is really good. I just, I, I, I really like it. Uh, also has paralysis on the attack, so that could come up. I don't know. I don't know, Caster, but it can come up. Uh, Block Knight Satellite is also maybe something I would have cited out I, or taken out. I would have potentially put in just another gun, but Black Knight's a pretty big body. I do like it. Um, it does have like a kind of mill effect on contract, so that's pretty cool. He can hit Burrow Beasties, which I think is also pretty cool. I, I would imagine he was, uh, John was probably expecting some more worms, so I think this card is a decent side against worms. A little bit expensive, but it's, it's pretty nice. And then lastly, guys, we've got Bets Sphere. Um, in case you guys are part of the judging community or like you're just a part of the discords, there's been a lot of talk about Bet Sphere, and he's kind of funny. Um, so the power roll around, pick up this beastie, shake it, and place it anywhere in the arena fatigued. At the start of the next turn, you may hum, and if you do so, when an opposing caster targets pages you control with spells or potions, this beastie becomes the target of the effect instead until the end of the turn so pretty good card it can stop a lot of things and it can make a lot of things fizzle so for example right spells and potions at target dampen absorb aura if i'm not mistaken it also stops uh what is that i think it stops toxic water if i'm not mistaken because i think toxic water targets yep target bc so um it would end up having to target the bet sphere I think Bet Sphere is pretty solid. I think it's kind of funny. I think it's it's definitely something that can be played. Um, hey, if it worked out for him, it worked out for him. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's really funny. It also has Stone Skin for some reason, right? I just think overall, it's a funny side deck card. Uh, I don't know what to say. I just it's it's a cool card. It's a cool card. But overall, guys, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. Uh, again, shout out to John. I appreciate the fact that you're always out there playing, always out there hustling and wrestling on the grind. And um, in case you guys are interested in playing against John and a lot of the other good players down here in Texas, I'm actually going to be hosting a medal event on the 21st of January down at Play Packets in Austin, Texas. I'm going to go ahead and leave a uh, link down below to the MPN in case you guys want to sign up for that um it's gonna be a pretty fun time guys it's gonna be pretty cool um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh i'm gonna go ahead and go guys uh thanks for watching and i'll go and see you later goodbye blah, 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 blah.